a weight adjusted. Um, there, the 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 correct dose varies somewhere between 0.1 and 0.2 millimoles per kilogram. Um, there for, are for MR. For MR, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not familiar with the CT doses because I, I don't practice CTs. I, I leave right. that to my radiology uh, colleagues. Um, in MR, some centers, especially in Europe, use, uh, use 0.1, which gives you a pretty good... So for an angiogram, usually 0.1 is going to be enough. For late enhancement studies, um, you can probably see significant things. There have been studies that have looked at uh, progressive doses, and obviously the reason 0.2 is used is because it offers the best contrast to noise ratio. All right. We find I personally use 0.15 based on some studies, published studies, that found that at 0.15 you probably have most of the advantages it's of like 0.2. Uh, yeah. A little bit more enhancement than 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 you do at 0.1. Right. But I th I still think that you can get the diag most of the diagnosis with 0.1. Now, um, if you're using 0.1. Do you have to give more of the contrast, would you say? Um, or typically for an angiogram, uh, in order not to oversaturate and get the, right. you know, the, the artifacts that go with that, sometimes we'll, we'll if, we're, if we plan on doing a late enhancement study, we'll typically use, um, well, as we say, half dose uh, or point 0.1 for the angiogram. And then sometimes we'll add a little more. Uh, but different practitioners have different uh, oh, ways. Okay. I think if you're... I mean, like, like, like it's done in, in a lot of MRI, especially in Europe, uh, a lot of practitioners use, will simply use 0.1. I just find sometimes mm -hmm. you, you're, you're, you may be missing out a little bit on, 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 uh, on, on some of the enhancement there. Right. So I want to maximize, uh, maximize that. There's also, also timing. I was going to talk about give, that. You have to image sooner. You know, I've had conversations about the timing, and you said that there's been studies that, you know, you said, you know, don't worry about if you've, if it says a 10 minute delay, if you get it at 12 minutes, you can kind of touch on that a little bit. Yeah. I mean, uh, late enhancement lasts. I mean, th there are studies that have shown that, um, you can see enhancement for like 30 minutes or, or even 40 minutes in, you know, in, in, in large. Now this is an abnormal, uh, myocardium, oh, okay. normal myocardium will, uh, that will all be washed away. Um, but um, there are studies that have looked at uh, late enhancement, for example, in, in, in myocardial infarction. And in, in the earlier you image, if you have a really deeply d dead um, my myocardium, uh -huh. we call that um, uh, microvascular obstruction. When, it's, when, when the infarct has really totally demolished the myocardial architecture and there's, it, there's no flow going into that. There's, right. It's called a no reflow zone. And those will appear dark in early imaging, in between five and ten minutes. But if you're patient, we don't have the time. To, we don't want to keep patients in in the magnet for forty minutes. You know, who right. want, who wants to? But some studies have shown that if you re-image at thirty and forty minutes, these areas that are totally non-reflow will eventually start enhancing w with time. So that's why I'm saying if you're if you're if you're in the middle of you know finishing your cine and you're saying you know if you're using point one. Or, or half dose, it might be more important to image early. Um, if you're using 0.2, it may not be that 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 critical. Again, I I, I think you w this can be argued many ways, and and, and physicists right. probably have a, a better handle or better grip on the timing of 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 LG. But I'm I'm less nervous with that. It's usually if you're if you're a 10 versus 12 right. versus eight. Personally, I don't. I don't think it makes a big difference. I think the more time you 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 give, well, obviously normal areas will will wash out. Right. The blood pool will wash out, and this leaves your your enhanced area to be the the lonely um, you know the, the lonely stickler there exactly. that, that that's left. So, I, I haven't found it. But obviously, for a patient's comfort, we don't want these tests to to, to last forever. We'll, right. We want we want you know. If you've ever had an MRI and you're you're in this you know in this coffin, <laughs> you're, you want to get out. You know your cigar case. Cigar right? case. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, so. Right. Uh, well, and for the MR techs, uh, one thing what you would do is calibrate the optimal TA, TI time as you would run a TI scout um, right. for the late gad enhancement. Losing the look locker uh, technology. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious though, unless unless a patient is presented to you with an already diagnosis of amyloid. Because normally you would run the gate late GAD enhancements at eight minutes, but with amyloid you would run it at four. So, what if amyloid was an incidental finding? 
Yeah, well, the, the thing with, with early early enhancement, it's, it's, it's useful to do early enhancement because in some areas it can help you uh, diagnose areas that are poorly perfused. It also tells you areas that have excessive uh, gadolinium accumulation. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can use that as a comparison, an, an early versus a classic late, and classic late is typically at 10 to 15 minutes following injection. That's when we, you know, the, the classic uh, timing for that. Um, we've pushed the envelope because we want to, we want to improve throughput and, and, and minimize patient discomfort by shortening the exam to the, to the shortest that's, that's scientifically right. adequate to get, to get the answer because we don't want to leave people in there for, for, for too long. For but, sure. uh, yeah, no, so, so it does bring some, and, and that, that, m uh, microvascular obstruction or, or no reflow zone can be diagnosed in this way where you see, um, you know, enhancement within normal myocardium and, and lack thereof in areas that, that are, that are, that are infarcted with an early late gadolinium enhancement ha happening as well. Right. And then as you let more time elapse, well, the normal myocardium gets rid of the, of, of the gadolinium, that area that's, that's been centrally necrotic can sometimes start taking up a little bit with time. Mm -hmm. And then you see the classic LGE in the infarcted zone that that's where well we're, you we're mentioned it before curvy. you're able to distinguish between the different tissues better with MR so yeah um, yeah I mean um, it translates to diagnosis for yeah and and it and it uh, I think it's a it, I think it's a useful test to do in patients who've had uh, MI um, it can bring a lot of information to the table in those where MIs are caused by where something a stress test couldn't do uh, well a st yeah well um, if someone's had an MI, sometimes we're a little sheepish in doing a stress test. So in someone who hasn't had an MI to diagnose coronary disease, this is a great test. In someone who's had an MI, sometimes we'll, we'll just try to assess the extended damages first. Mm -hmm. and, I f and where I find you can get you know, added value from MR is in those areas where, um, in, in, in those cases rather, where your, your, your MI is not explained by, by a corresponding coronary lesion. Mm -hmm. So let's say you've got like, you know, you think there's an anterior MI and then you, you do a coronary angiogram and you find normal coronaries or minimal plaques. Then you say, oh my goodness, how did that happen? Why, why, why is there an MI, what looks like an MI on echo and with enzymes and the patients are sure as hell had pain. So you have all the, all the criteria of the, of the universal definition of, of myocardial infarction, which is having pain that lasts long, having EKG abnormalities and having functional uh, abnormalities on, on non-invasive testing. And then you see, what? There's no, there's no lesion. So what is wrong? So is this, did this patient have like, you know, minimal coronary disease or does he have something else? You know, does he have, um, could he have, for example, a stress cardiomyopathy, uh, also called uh, AKA Takotsubo, or could he have had like just a virus, a cardiomyopathy, um, uh, a myocarditis. So sometimes, or he may have, he may have had an MI and simply the, 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 the artery got, you know, reperfused. It was a, like a, a tiny little blockage that bled uh, formed a big clot over it that, that blocked the circulation for an amount of time. And then when the patient was given blood thinners, uh, like aspirin and heparin, this blockage washed away and then you have nothing left behind. That can happen too. So, so with the late gadolinium enhancement, we can sort of see this kind of, um, of, uh, of, uh, this fingerprint, right. this LGE fingerprint for various diseases. Nice. I have a slide. I don't know if we, we have time uh, later. This, this actually was a paper that was written by one of my colleagues, uh, Chris Cummings, um, on, um, on the various, uh, and I think it's one of my last uh, slides that I gave you, David. Um, that, 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 the last one there, uh, the bottom one, yeah. So this is from uh, Dr. Cummings uh, when he was a fellow. <laughs> and this summarizes the, uh, the fingerprint of, of late gadolinium enhancement, what we see when we give that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, like if we see something that's, uh, that's subendocardial or transmural, that typically is something that's, that's, that's coronary or vascular. Um, if we see stuff that's in the middle, uh, or what we call mesocardial is shown in the upper left. So, so I'm like sorry. our hypertrophic cardiomyopathy case we saw. Is that meant to represent like a short axis? It is, yes. That's a short axis view. Sorry, okay. yes. Uh, yeah, okay. covered. Good point. And, um, if it's uh, so, you can see different diseases may have different fingerprints, and that's how we use this kind of distribution to see um, 
you know, to, to help. CSI almost. That's right. We're <laughs> playing CSI. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> nice. 